So we have done quite some work in this series where we are building our very own board game room. We have leveled the floor, we laid this laminate flooring on top, and we have built the base of our built-in bookcase slash gigantic aquarium stand, and have gotten into a serious fight with the cabinet doors and the countertops. But in this video, that should all be fixed. Welcome back to whatever goes on around our Dutch farmhouse. Well, hello again. I think I have fixed most of the problems that I had with the doors. I, let me show you. For this one, I actually etched out a piece of the wood here so that the hinge will go further into that side wall. And that actually fixed the problem. I did a similar solution for the other cabinet next to it. And then remember the one that I said that we had to replace the door for? I managed to tweak it so that it wasn't as bad as it was. So I decided for now I am going to leave it. I could always decide to build another door. It is really not that big a deal, but I really just want to keep going <laughs> building the cabinet. What I'm going to get started with is I have these little pieces of plywood. I'm going to attach these to the back here so that the doors will stay closed this way. I will also paint these and I will do some touch-ups on the paint because I created some damage when I was <laughs> fixing things. <laughs> so that's definitely necessary. There are some scrapes and pieces where I just damaged the paint. So let me fix that up. And then we're gonna add some pretty things like doorknobs. I don't like having paint on my hinges but after all the trouble I went through with these doors, I am not taking them off. So I'm just going to paint around the hinge just so that everything is gray on the inside of the cabinet. You know, I don't really care that it's not perfect on the inside or I would not be painting with my left hand. I just don't want it to be the first thing you see when you open the cabinet. Ow. Oh. See, these doors hate me. I am marking the middle of the door vertically and the middle of the space between the picture frame molding and the side of the door to determine where the doorknobs go. Again, using my trusty seam gauge because it is so small and handy. I ordered these beautiful brass doorknobs when I got the legs for the dog bed that I built a while ago. I saw them on their website for sale and figured I would probably find good use for them at some point. And here we are. The screws that it came with though did turn out to be a little bit too long, so I did go out and get new screws that were exactly the same, just a little bit shorter. So in my last video, I explained to you that the plan that I had for the countertop actually didn't work because the wood that I have for it is so warped and twisted and bad that it was absolutely unacceptable and I could not use it. So I had to find a different solution which I did, this is just plywood, just simple plywood. I sanded the whole thing and made it really smooth and then I attached it with a couple of nails just to keep it in place. But the idea that I have for this is actually a bit interesting because for a second there, with the last wood, the last plan, I actually thought about leaving this wood and stain it. But that is not what my plan said. That is not what I designed and that what I shared with you in my first video that I did of this room. In the original plan, the countertop is actually painted. So now that we're using plywood anyway, we're gonna paint it gray, the same color as the cabinets. And that is just going to leave the backs of the bookcase, um, the wood tone. Now to make this countertop a little bit thicker because it is only 18 millimeters thick, I am actually going to add this strip of wood underneath. I'm just gonna glue and nail that in here. And then I'm gonna smooth everything out with wood filler, sand it, and see if we can make this look like one big piece of wood. And then we're gonna paint it, and then we would finally, finally, start working on the bookcases. Which is exciting, because then it is actually finally becoming what, it, what I imagined. So, let's attach this one. Like 
not so bad. If I do say so myself, I think it looks really, really good. So I have filled up all the gaps, all the imperfections between the two layers of plywood. And I'm just going to sand it now. A while ago, I actually laid out the rug because I was too impatient and I wanted to see what it looked like, but I never actually took it out, which is incredibly impractical when you're working here. Up until now, I've, I've managed to sand everything outside, but obviously this needs to be sanded while it's installed. So I'm going to roll up the rug so that it's out of the way and it doesn't become all dirty. After I've sanded it, I'll be ready to prime it. And I'm actually just using a regular white primer for it. And after that has dried, which should only take about an hour, I will be ready to paint it. While the primer was drying, I figured I would install the piece of trim underneath the countertop. I had already painted this before, so all I had to do was nail it in and just touch up the paint a little. While the countertop paint was drying, I could finally start building the bookcases and the middle piece that will go on top of the cabinets. I started with that middle section because I figured that was going to be most of the work. So I made a box out of plywood and connected them with a couple of slats just so that it would stay in place, but also to give me something to nail the shiplap pieces into. I had these shiplap pieces left over from when I built my kitchen island and I will link to that video below because that is actually another project I'm pretty proud of. <laughs> now I didn't quite have enough so I did have to go out and get another pack but then I was just cutting them to the right height and nailing them in. I then moved the whole thing into the game room so that I could lay it flat on the floor and prime the whole thing because this too will be that dark gray color. So I just got back from the hairdresser, which is why I've got like a new haircut. I thought I would just throw that in there, but I thought I would let you know kind of where we're at. I made that thing, which is um, the middle section that's going to be in the middle of the cabinet. And then there's going to be bookcases on either side. I have just primed this and I'm going to paint it. Whoa, you're heavy. Whew. I'm going to paint it the same color as I did the cabinets. And then we can finally move on to the bookcases, which I'm very excited about because then we are almost done and I can finally get my living room back because that is like a construction zone. I mean, we, we cannot even have dinner here if we wanted to, so. I hope you like my new hair. I do. I, it does have to like train a little bit so that this will fall the right way. It's going to take a while, but we're just going to ignore that for now. Now, as I do with everything, I caulk all the corners so that it's nice and finished. And then, as I said, I painted it the dark gray color of the cabinets. For the bookcases, I simply created a box, but again, without the bottom piece. And I am using 90 degree angle clamps to keep everything in place and at the right angle, which is incredibly handy for projects like this, but especially if you're working alone. And then I screw and glue all that together. Then I fit the bookshelves inside, making sure that they're all at the same height. And I am simply securing them by screwing them in on the sides because you will not be able to see the sides of the bookcases anyway. And then I did all of that again to make two bookcases. Now I quickly changed into another shirt because the one I was wearing was actually not mine. And I don't know if you've noticed, but I cannot paint without getting paint all over me. Now this MDF happens to be a dark gray color, so that will make painting it a lot easier and I might even get away with doing only one coat. So the back of the bookcases, I want it to be wood. So I got sheets of wood, which is very thin stuff, just this, 
that I will be nailing into the back. This is actually a scrap piece because what I wanted to do was stain it and I use the same stain for pretty much everything which is a chestnut color it's this one and I love it and I've used it throughout the entire house but this is a different kind of wood and the wood itself actually has a different color than the pine that I usually use so I am very curious what happens if I'm gonna put the stain on because it might actually look really really stupid this wood has a red tone, a pinkish tone. I don't think you can really see it on camera, but... So I don't know exactly what the effect's gonna be if I'm gonna use this stain. So I'm just gonna try it out, which is why I got that scrap piece so that we can try it. So I'm just gonna put something on it. And um, if I really, really hate it, then I will have to go out and get samples of different kinds of stain to try it on and just see, see what we're gonna do. But for now, I have this, and it would be lovely if we could just use it. Remember I said that I get paint everywhere? I've actually already washed my hands, but there's paint in my new hair! So I'm just gonna put something on a little paper, t paper, b b b paper towel. I'm gonna put a little bit on a paper towel. Let's see what it does. It's gonna be really reddish, I think. What do we think? I actually don't hate it. I actually think it's pretty cool. And I think it should have a bit of a sheen to it as well. So I should probably finish it off with something satin. It shouldn't be super glossy. Put the other part off screen like this. You can see it better. I'm gonna let this dry for a bit just to be sure. Now because I wanted two wall lights coming out of the cabinet, I had already put in the wiring for it. I just had to split it in two so that I could have a light on both sides and then make sure that the wires were long enough to go to the side and up where the lights are gonna go. I made these bookcases mostly out of a thick MDF that I actually got from a friend of ours, so that definitely saved on some costs for this build. They were very thick and sturdy, which was great, especially for the bookshelves, but that did make those bookcases very, very heavy. <laughs> Now obviously they would have been too big for me to carry on my own anyway, so I asked Steven to help me out and we put the bookcases on top of the cabinets and it looked so good. I attached all those top pieces to each other just to make sure that nothing moves around and warps later. You can also see here that I need to do some touch-ups on the paint in the spaces between the shiplap. The paint there has broken when I carried the thing on top because it just moved around a little bit too much. But I will do that at the very end. I measured and cut the pieces for the front and used my jigsaw to make a little cutout to make sure that it goes around the little trim piece that is on the ceiling. And then I took everything out again primed it, and then cut a hole in the pieces where the lights are gonna go so that the wires can go through, and then I put everything back on. The last little thing that needs to be done, which is the top pieces of the cabinet, and I actually had to cut them because as we have run into before, the ceiling is incredibly slanted. So I had to make sure that the top pieces were not straight. If I would have made them straight, it would have looked like one of the bookshelves wouldn't have been straight. So I, I thought the best solution was to cut the pieces with an angle of the ceiling, if that makes sense. So that's what I did. So this is what it will look like. So I'm just going to go and sand and prime and paint these pieces and then we can put them on and then it's really almost done and it looks so good. I'm so excited. So my hair completely exploded, so I put a headband in, but that was not as bad as I thought. Actually, it looks a lot better than I thought it would. 
now that we are really almost done, I just need to do a couple of finishing touches. I've already done all the touch-ups on the paint and I'm just connecting and hanging the lights from the cabinets as well as adding some supports on the insides of the cabinets so that we can put some shelves in. Okay, so it's looking absolutely stunning. I am usually very humble about the things that I make, but for an amateur like me, this has turned out really, really good. So if you're ever wondering if you can build something like this, yes, you can, absolutely. Just get started. I mean, I did learn some things. I did do some things wrong, but I will probably make another one at some point and I will have learned from it and I will use that knowledge and do it better. Now I cannot wait to start decorating this thing, so let's do that. So I went into my little closet of thrift finds and I got some stuff. I have, I have books of course. And I have some other things. I have a beautiful blanket. I like it, but it's obviously not going to go in the bookshelves. It's probably going to be over one of the chairs that's going to be here. I have a basket of some little things. Oh, this is another book. It's a pretty book. I don't know if we can actually use it this way, but look at the inside. I have a little frame with a painting in it, like a ballerina scene. I have some faux plants that I want to use. I have this hourglass that I thought would be fun. I have a couple of those ponds. I don't know if I'm going to use them this way or maybe I will even spray paint them. I don't know. We'll see. We're going to start with the games though because as you know this is going to be our game room and although I would really love to decorate these bookshelves completely with old books and trinkets. I actually want to incorporate some of the game elements as well. So I'm going to get a couple of the board games with the pretty box, you know, the ones that are worthy of being displayed in our beautiful bookshelves. <laughs> it's so pretty. This is Everdell, which is definitely going to be up here. Is it Crusoe or Cruzo? This is a really, really fun game to play. And it's also incredibly frustrating. We have Gloomhaven, which is absolutely our favorite game, which is a big box too. Let me see if I can find some more. Okay. Well, let's see where we're gonna put everything. So I seem to not have enough things to decorate with. Does that mean we need to go shopping? Let me shop around the house. Now before I end this video, I have a quick side note because the observant among you may have noticed that I have changed my channel name from Hobbyistic to the Dutch Farmhouse and I'll quickly explain why. Hobbyistic came from the idea that I have many, many hobbies that I wanted to share with you and I have realized that we are in a very unique situation. We live in a very old, typically Dutch farmhouse and there is so much more going on here that I would like to share with you. So. Instead of just doing these DIY projects that I do now, I might in the future also go into sewing my own clothing. I want to start a vegetable garden. We are currently talking about, talking about, we have not yet made a decision. We are talking about maybe getting chickens. So there's a lot to be done and there's a lot that I could share with you. So I changed my name to something a little bit more broad and it became Dutch Farmhouse. Just wanted to quickly explain that. If you do have any questions or if there's anything you would like to know, drop me a message. I might reply in the comment section or maybe I will make a video about it. If you wanna get notified when I upload my next video, make sure you're subscribed and hit that little bell thingy because we are not done. 
There is so much more to do. We have to do this. See, this, this used to be a door. I want to hide that somehow. I want to make and hang curtains for that window. I actually have the fabric for this. Hang on. This is it. Fancy curtains for a fancy game room. I also want to build a desk for the computer. I want to make a big trap door to the cellar. There's so much more to do, you guys. So there will definitely be a part four. So stick around for that. And for now, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.